um, has this meeting been publicly noticed? It has. Okay. All right. Well, um, can we take a roll call? Trustee Lynn. Present. Trustee Morbalda. Present. Trustee Ersink. Present. All right, welcome everybody to uh, this evening's public works um, meeting. Uh, it's a very exciting conversation tonight that we are going to be having about uh, North Oakland um, redesign. And uh, just uh, for anybody that's new or unfamiliar uh, about this, we will be, uh, 2025, we'll be reconstructing um, North Oakland Avenue. And we've gone through several uh, preliminary meetings already to discuss um, design characteristics that we'd like to add. And tonight we'll be reviewing those characteristics block by block. Um, I guess a good place to start is maybe a little bit more of an overview with either Mustafa or Leanne here on the project before we start uh, discussing. Of course. Okay, so where would we like to start this evening? Um, as you said, we, following our last meeting and the direction we were given at the uh, village board meeting, um, we uh, introduced all of the concepts that we had um, discussed and uh, agreed upon uh, in the previous public course committee meeting. And um, we uh, introduced those concepts into the corridor uh, as appropriate um, and as requested. Um, and uh, as a result of some discussions uh, internally and uh, staff, um, village staff. So uh, as, as uh, you expect, we prepared the, our graphics uh, block by block so we can just clearly focus on each element and get input from you, uh, the committee, so that uh, we can essentially get our marching orders to produce the documents that you require so that uh, you can build it in 25. Yeah, and I think our group, uh, as a village manager, the engineer, uh, public works, we've been pretty um, open with all of the with the public and all of our committees uh, to give us feedback. We've we've been in communication with all the chairs, uh, whether it be um, uh, pedestrian safety, pet, uh, pet and bike safety, um, open spaces, uh, conservation committee. So we're really looking forward to getting everybody's feedback on on um, on this topic because this is a really big project. So. Um, we've gotten pretty far along in the process right now, so uh, now we are just kind of reviewing at a point where we're reviewing these uh, these design features. And uh, are, are you going to be presenting up here on the? Yes. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. So why don't we why don't we get started? Okay. So um, this is a, a quick. Uh, matrix of the concepts that uh, we had discussed um, and uh, the three main elements that um, we are introducing in this in this design are um, transportation parking analysis pedestrian and bicycle master plan um, documents uh, that had uh, many of the uh, recommendations um, of course the villages green infrastructure uh, handbook and guidance, and uh, other considerations uh, that uh, we discussed uh, both in this forum, but also with staff. And uh, as we received comments, there, there are some other uh, elements that um, we thought that uh, satisfy your vision for uh, for the corridor. So let's see and uh, um, get some input. Fantastic. All right. So let's um, um, just begin from um, Oakland to Emdale, right? Um, um, maybe before you start, does any, are there any questions from the other committee members before we get into this? Trustee Lynn, uh, Trustee Baldoff? No, nope. okay. So Oakland to Emdale, South End. Um, and uh, here we are uh, proposing uh, curb bump outs at the south side, uh, south sort of pedestrian crossing of Elmdale. Um, and um, uh, the, um, there will also be uh, two um, um, tree pits, stormwater green infrastructure tree pits at two of the locations where we have ash, ash trees removed. 
So immediately coming into Oakland uh, on the northbound at the first intersection, there will be uh, an opportunity for uh, uh, um, RFBs and um, a, um, a curb bump up situation. Mustafa. Yes. Could you take a moment and, and as we go through each intersection also explain um, why bump outs are applied in certain locations and not in others? Yes, of course. Um, in this case, the um, um, we the 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 one of the elements, uh, as you see, the um, um, uh, well, the alley entrance is right at the north crosswalk, and um, in our opinion, it's um, um, it would be confusing for motorists uh, and pedestrians to have um, a bump out a crossing situation and also uh, turning movements. So that's why uh, we're um, encouraging um, shorter walking across on the south side. And of, of, of course, you might appreciate kind of a visually um, sticking uh, this curb sticking out uh, as motorists are traveling this this uh, commercial, you know, our heart of downtown kind of area, uh, you know, just to and introduce some calming. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, you will see some uh, locations where um, we uh, elected um, not to propose bump outs. Um, and, uh, but I mean, overall, um, the overwhelming majority of the uh, crossings you will see have um, the, the, the feature. Um, Incidentally, we also introduced it at uh, signalized ones mm -hmm. just to make crossing the street a little bit more comfortable for, for folks. Anyway, so um, this would be our first entry um, as we're going north. Any other comments that uh, you guys might? If there are comments, we would ask that the individual come to the microphone that's located just next to the podium and make sure to ask those questions at intersections. Right here. Right over here. Thank you. These are wonderful drawings, by the way. Thank you. Um, I do I see a northbound bike lane, but no southbound bike lane here. Are you supposed to merge with the regular traffic? I see a little skinny. So that that line you see on the south side, southbound, is the sort of bike separator. Um, so there will be just as there is today. Okay. It's. Both it, ways. It, it seems to be marked differently on the other side. It is, it, but yes. it's there. It is okay. There. Mm -hmm. So that little smudge, the black smudge you see, you see right um, south of the bump out, is actually the remnants of a bike um, shape. Yes. No. The bike lanes remain at every place that we've put them so far. Um, because the uh, as you come out, the bump outs don't go into the bike lane. The bump outs only go as far as the edge of the parking lane, if you can imagine that. So you know how you have two lines, two white lines dem demar demarking the, is that a word? Um, Demar mm -hmm. Demarcation. Demar okay, so um, the bike lane, so the bump out will only go to the curbside line, the travel lane side line of the bike lane would continue right through. So in, as you go, as if you're a biker, you would essentially continue uninterrupted. So next Elmdale to Kenmore Place. And Mustafa, just uh, if there are any comments, we'll take those block by block. So if there's anything you okay. know, the public, you guys see that you want to talk about, please raise your hand so we can discuss it block by block. So here um, we are, um, we are leaving essentially this intersection alone. Um, one of the issues here is um, on the southbound side, there's a bus stop. Um, the delivery situation on, I keep saying that word. Um, the delivery, the delivery movements um, on uh, Canmore, west side of Oakland, 
um, and how they currently interact with the um, westbound uh, turning lane are already uh, very tight. Um, it, this this uh, would have been, uh, I mean, we struggled with this, I guess, uh, to, to, um, to put it bluntly. And we decided that this is one place that we are not um, comfortable putting bump ups or, or modifying the curb line. Now, one thing that I should mention, as you know, all of our um, Oakland crosswalks are brick. There will be no brick when we're done with this. So these red lines you see as sort of ladder paint um, that uh, on gray, those will look exactly like Capitol looks after the nice paint job today. Mm. And can you please explain yesterday. why we are removing the bricks or why that's recommended? <laughs> yes, of course, with great pleasure. Um, the, the bricks were um, a great idea um, when they were proposed uh, in 2007. And um, I, they have not worn well. Um, you might notice that many of them have sunk, broken, and otherwise been damaged. And um, pedestrians, bikers, and motorists um, are um, not being well served. Um, I think it's a cleaner look. Um, one other thing is that um, at the intersections where we do have bump outs, so for example, Kenmore would not be one of those. So the Kenmore, the four corners, the pedestrian space would look very similar to today, mm -hmm. unless we're told otherwise. However, every, every time we have a bump out, that bump out is normal concrete. So the brick from the sidewalk will not be extending there. The other thing is that all of the, so because of the age of the um, um, ADA ramps at those intersections, um, we, we, you know, they, the new ones will be uh, according to new guidelines. And so um, the look will be more of a more in tune with the street, so concrete, and sort of a much more smoother sort of, um, ramp. Um, I guess one question that we might discuss is where we're not touching the, uh, the sidewalk, whether this is an opportunity to redo those corners, the pedestrian space corners, to redo the ADA ramps. So that, that's not sort of part of this conversation, probably. That's uh, a direction from um, um, Leanne to whether just go and make those compatible with current standards. Are we required to do that as a village if we're going through this process to update and? Uh... It'd be highly advisable, and it, yes, it will it will be. We've we've discussed this internally. It will be DPW's recommendations that we um, that we consistently apply um, any changes to pedestrian ramps mm -hmm. so that there is both visual and and user consistency. Um, so currently, in most of these locations, we have. ADA ramps that are actually um, trunk, truncated, truncated pavers, mm -hmm. which if you picture that as a, a ginormous Lego, if you will, that's basically what they look like. Um, it, it's going to be our recommendation and our direction to include into the design um, that, we, that we modify even the existing ramps that we will not um, be enlarged or the, the existing radiuses that will not be enlarged those um, we need to update those and standardize those ramps to current standards. Uh, yeah, and, and yes, I would strong because look at Elmdale, right? Um, so you will see that the south corner will be concrete and 100% sort of um, according to current ADA layout. And you cross the street to the north, it's brick and it um it's not no we don't want that. yeah that's right so like visually it looks goofy mm -hmm. i mean just throw away all the other things it's just it, it, it just looked goofy i mean it's one of those things 
that as engineers, we kind of avoid um, that like normal people, final users kind of look at it and it's like, they spend 3 million bucks and look at what they did. So we would not yeah. recommend. Understood. So north of Kenmore, um, so as you see at Jarvis, the west curb line is already a giant bump out. Um, so um, at least on the south side, we're going to um, we're going to match it. So bump out the other side. Um, and in this case, um, according to previous studies and plans on the um, on on the books, um, we're going to essentially remove that crosswalk. Um, so that's going to be a straight through, and. Um, just the reason for it is the dry, uh, parking entrance just just north of it on on the west side, um, and I think um, um, some decorative barrier sort of to discourage the use of that sort of north half of that intersection for crossing. Um, you know, people waiting to turn, people coming out southbound. It's just a sort of a busy, confusing sort of a situation, situation um, where we'd like to sort of use some gentle encouragement to uh, discourage people to use. Uh, but on the south side, yes, so there will be again a constriction. So we have a normal intersection and just a couple of buildings up. We again have this constriction. We have a short crossing, right? Um, we again have a beacon, a flasher. Um, so I think that um, sort of it calms down that, that area and simplifies it. So that's the idea there is to simplify it. A uh, quick question on, on that. Um, that, makes, that makes sense. I was a little confused looking at this earlier why we're going to remove that crosswalk, but it makes sense given that explanation. When we remove that, will we also remove the, the ramp into the street that going towards that crosswalk too. So curb all the way around just to the other way. Okay. Right. Okay. Correct. And that, and that uh, the removal of that crosswalk was um, brought up in our transportation and parking analysis, correct? Uh, correct. A couple of years ago, they recommended removing that for safety concerns. Right. And with discussion uh, with staff, we, we thought some sort of a, either fence or planter, some sort of a barrier in that gap, because there's already a planter there. Um, so we're thinking of just specifying either, a, I mean, I don't know if it's a fence, but it's some impediment. Yeah. I like it. Um, well, one second, um, uh, up here, Nat, just come up to the mic, please. Yep. Just state your name and your address. 413 North Oakland Avenue. And try to get into the mic. Yep, so we can hear Matt you. Matt Devour, 4413 North Oakland Avenue. Um, just my opinion, I understand what you just said 100% going on there, but anybody coming from that, let's say, northeast shorewood, everything coming out northeast from that corner, or even the people who park right in front of Stone Creek, which is very common, including myself, who run into the grocery store. Um, without that crosswalk, you're going to cross two streets. You know, you're going to kind of be asking somebody to make two crossings oh. um, to avoid that, right? Am I understanding that right? So you're saying you're crossing to the right and then... Yeah, so if you parked the... right in front yeah. of Stone Creek by that ash spot and you run across the street right there, but because that's gone, you're going to have to cross Jarvis and then cross Oakland. No matter what the discouragement is, I just don't see that working. I see. It might work 5% of the time, but if there's some sort of barrier with the intent being making it safer, I guarantee you most people are going to jump the barrier or whatever and do that because <laughs> they're, they're going to be parked <laughs> right there and they're going to have to cross two streets to run over to their car. Yeah. And I or just don't think they will. Go diagonal into the parking lot, which yeah. you see sometimes too. I see, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of people pull right up there next to Stone Creek yeah. and run into that door. And you're basically saying you have to run backwards across Jarvis and then cross Oakland, which again, understand 100%. I just think in reality that won't end up working. 
Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I completely understand what I you're saying. I don't know what the answer saying. is. I'm just saying um, it's a good thought, but no, that's a really good point, though, Nat. Thank you. I, I have a quick question. Um, what if we moved the crosswalk further over, closer to the door, closer to the entrance of the Metro Market? There's a little no parking area right in the round of the corner there on the Stone Creek side. This is a better picture. Yep. If you look at it. Yeah. So, yeah. And then what if instead of making it in line with the street, what if the crosswalk was on its own, almost out of the middle of the block, you know, or just, just, you know, 10 or so feet in from the corner. Um, let's see. You see my mm -hmm. cursor? Yeah. You mean over here? Yeah. What if it came over there and was separated from the street so that it was, and still had the flashing beacon, it'd be like a standalone um, crosswalk. But I think that exacerbates the problem we are trying to avoid, which is people turning out of that driveway aren't looking for pedestrians, they're looking for gaps in traffic. Mm -hmm. And now you've moved the pedestrian even closer to their turning movement. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we thought cross here, but then there's this entrance. There's a, there's a surface lot here. I mean, it's a, so, well, one of the things that I, with the surface lot, all the traffic is going eastbound into that. Um, right. So that might not be the worst area. So nobody's going to be coming out of crossing the left. I, I mean, it, it, you, you can put a crossing where it says add bump out at entrance. Mm -hmm. So you can essentially cross right there where that red car is. Would that take away a parking space though? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. But I think Potent that's still, I, I think though that still would create a similar problem. It's still like an, ad, an additional movement, right? Cause somebody's sure, having to go north sure. to cross. Like if we're worried about people who are like, right there, I don't know what the right solution is other than, um, we don't want people getting hit, um, by cars turning out of the, the parking structure, because I've seen a lot of near misses there. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, frankly, for the further away you can get from that, that driveway is probably the better for a crosswalk. It's just, right. you know. It's just... Okay. Unfortunately. But I do understand what you're saying. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a difficult situation. I think that if people want to do it, they will cross right there. there I mean, the gentleman is 100% correct. I mean, people, you can't, you can't truly social engineer anything really <laughs> other than Facebook. There's no Wisconsin law against jaywalking technically. So it's <laughs> technically allowed. Um, is it? it? It is. You can cross at your own risk oh. at any time on any street. Um, but you can get in trouble if you block traffic. So for everyone's knowledge. Not that the village is recommending what? anyone do that. No, no, no. Yes, correct. Don't do it, but. And there's usually a police officer parked in that no parking <laughs> right. spot. So, so just, <laughs> you know. Well, in this aerial, you see a fire truck. So um, <laughs> at one way, if one, it, hey, one if it's an ambulance, some... you know, you might be, uh, and you want to cross at your own risk. It might be so okay. speaking of that, it is a good segue. Now we moved Jarvis to wood um, and that no man's land, right? So what we're thinking here is essentially to um, put a bump out there where um, that goofy radius or the um, entrance of the parking lot is so that it would look essentially symmetrical to the other end and have a you know true opening where people can behave properly at a, at a, at a, at a driveway entrance. But then... Um, kick back the existing curb to essentially where we, it would have been um, and create a longer pocket and maybe not have that no parking, just have that part of the street, mm. you know, like regular old Oakland. 
Um, the other end would have a bump out. Now, this one is a the, the this this pair at wood. You see that they're orphans, um, because at this point, um, the um, at this current point, we're assuming we're staying with the current bus stop locations. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do promise you that we will try to work with them. And if we are successful in moving them around, switching them, switching them around, we will pair these bump outs, mm -hmm. but with the existing sort of layout of the MCTS, um, bus stops, um, these are sort of orphan bump outs, not pairs. Mm -hmm. And how have those conversations been going? I know that's been ongoing and. Um, since uh, we've started that, but uh, I wanted to hold off until I have the final direction plan. from you, right? So right. I, I think that um, it's, it's, um, it's not appropriate for our end to sort of speculate. We want to carry your voice. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we wanted to wait. Justin Sofran. So at this point, are all the bus stops in the same place as they currently are? The, uh, the graphics show the bus stops as they currently as they are. currently are. Yes, okay, and this is a related question, but not your area. If anybody knows, who decides where the bus stop shelters go and who pays for them? I know this is curbs in, but I'm just curious because we just did the walking on it, and I was surprised how many bus stops don't have a shelter. The village is responsible, generally speaking, for the shelters. For where the who who which their, ones their placement and their cost. Right. So that's, you see a lot of, cool. uh, not to get on this topic, but you see a lot of, um, you know, advertising on shelters is that to help offset costs most of the time. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So that's maybe something to look into in the future. Um, so I don't know uh, any reaction to sort of changing the curb gutter configuration um, in front of the store. Like How many parking spots would you pick up there? You know. Oh, I mean, I think overall it probably looks like what seven, eight. eight. Now the downside is all that sort of landscaping, the planters, all of that is probably looking for a new home. That's just going to ruin Metro Mart's appearance, isn't it? it? Yeah, terrible. Okay. That's too bad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, moving on. Let's go wood to olive so this is a longer block and um olive there you go that's what it should look like right four corners four symmetrical bump outs um and um the west side already has bump outs into uh olive street going west right mm -hmm. so uh, those curves will be um nice and sort of laid out um i think i think this is going to be one of the best looking intersections. It's just the symmetry of it is is right there. So now, Mustafa, I know that the theme of this is bump outs. We talk, we're talking a lot about bump outs. So maybe you could just kind of clarify and explain a little bit about bump outs to people that may not be familiar and what their importance are. Of course. So um, the the idea the it, in general, we use them to do two things. One is to visually constrict the motorist. Um, and sort of bring the pedestrian space more to the um, sort of field of view of a motorist. Uh, believe it or not, most people kind of pay attention to that and sort of, you know, behave more responsibly um, in general. Um, the, um, so that sort of brings some civilization into the motorist, right? Um, the other idea is, uh, you know, you're essentially reducing the street crossing distance for folks um, by almost 15, 16 feet, which is significant if you sort of visualize yourself walking from wall to wall here or end of bench to end of bench. It's, it's sort of you get it over with and you're, you're moving on. So those are the most important things. The other thing I think it creates these spaces right so as you know oakland is 
a corridor. We have lots of buildings, lots of activity, trees and things and parklets, all these things. Um, and it kind of opens up the thing as you go into the residential areas, sort of like it, it, it's a space. So those are the things that sort of give it value. Um, and in this case, I mean, it's just con it's reshaping concrete, right? So it's not a um, compli complicated thing to achieve or build. Yes. Now, one second, Mustafa. In terms of pump outs and snow plowing, if you could touch on that for a second, I assume it complicates. It does. Absolutely. It, it, of course. I mean, it's uh, instead of a blade, putting a blade down and going down a street, you know, you're essentially carving out and stopping. And um, so it's going to, and, and I think that we had this conversation, uh, Leanne had an estimate or Joel and Leanne, uh, it, it's going to slow down no clearing for sure. And then I'm sorry, uh, just to, before you respond, mm -hmm. Will we take in consideration the clean out of those walkways, especially the ADA sort of ramps, if we're going to re be re reconstructing ADA, you know, to make those more accessible um, or at least re revised to code? Will DPW actually go through and clean those out? Because I know in the past we just kind of plowed through a little bit and um, it's been, you know, sometimes snow has been kind of kept in those spaces. Um, so we do currently when the height of the snow reaches a certain point, mm -hmm. um, and, and typically, um, th that's also balanced with the coming forecast. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but typically when we have snow that reaches a height of greater than 12 inches, then we will come in and, and we will back drag all of those corners so that the entire, um, wedge is open rather than just the crossings. Um, Related to the earlier point, the the snow clearance uh, from the the travel lanes will not look any different and will not really be impacted by the bump outs. Um, the removal of snow from the parking areas and the and the corners and pedestrian areas, um, I think we estimated will take multiple days longer than it currently does um, and. Part of that uh, is because of the type of equipment that we use and the, we, we, we used um, skid loaders or skid steers for that currently. Um, we own two of those machines, um, but frankly, you know, even if we have multiple more, don't necessarily have multiple more bodies to put in them. Typically after the snow, everybody's doing snow stuff for multiple days. Um, so yes, I, I think it, it's fair to say, and, and it should be um, reiterated and expected that our our snow response will be different following the construction of this roadway. If I may, mm -hmm. I think we've also communicated that we we will not be able to meet um, some individuals' expectations with regards to snow removal. We don't have the capacity to do that, and so I think if the the board decides to move forward with this, they're gonna to need to look for other partners um, such as the bid to potentially contract for snow removal or seeing the resource center to contract for snow removal or different you know, groups who are very focused on having um, a higher level of service of removal of snow removal in these areas. Um, but the village will not be able to take on that task with current capacity. So that's just one thing that we need to be cognizant about so that um, everyone is aware of what those limitations are so that if this design is chosen that you know the board is making those efforts to partner with other groups that would be um, willing and able to, to support that activity. Have those conversations been uh, initiated yet? They have they have been discussed in the past with senior resource as well as the bid. Now there's a new executive director in that role, so that would need to um, that conversation would need to be had in their other business business districts who who pay for removal of the snow from 
these areas just particularly for this reason um, because municipalities can't keep up with sometimes the level of expectations that people have with, with regards to snow removal. Thank you. Um, question. Um, regarding the bump outs, they're too small for a ground cover, right? They're going to be all pavement. Is that? They are. And by ground cover, do you mean grass? Grass, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, a non-invasive? Uh, what was the non, uh, what was our? Permeable, yeah, gotcha. Yes, sir. Apologize for not having been to any committee things where this might've been discussed already, but I've seen bump outs done kind of as a more temporary thing with striping them and then putting cones that are like seasonally stuck to the shape of the bump out. Um, I'm assuming those are removed in the winter and then, you know, you kind of get the feature and use of a bump out, but you don't have to pay for the concrete or you don't have to deal with the physical situation in the winter. Like I think I saw it on North Avenue. I'm sure it was mostly for pedestrian safety. Um, I think they kind of just strike the bump out and then they put those phones, hmm. maybe screw them in the ground or something. I don't know if that was ever discussed and so there's a reason why or why not. I think typically when you see those applications, those are intermediate measures. Um, they recognize a need for a change or an improvement to the crossing, but don't have a, a construction um, anticipated plan financed or scheduled. Um, so that that type of application becomes, this is what we're going to do until we can construct a bump up. Typically, I'm not saying in all cases. That makes sense. Um, just curious if it, if there was ever a comparison, you know, of the value of getting that without the complications, it seems there's a trade-off following through with it in some way. And that seemed like an interesting potential where you don't have to make such a hard trade. Anyway, thank you. Um, just incidentally, well, all of bump out thought. So maybe, I don't know if this was what you were asking, but if you, made the bump out i notice the one side is really has a more gradual grade i mean a, a curve if you made the other curve so that it'd be easier for a snowplow to use and you wouldn't need a bobcat then you sacrifice parking right you know what i'm saying yes and yes. so is yes. that a choice that we could make yes. make it easier on dpw and sacrifice we, no we, we still need to use the skid steers because okay. the Alternative would be posting for no parking till we get the entire street cleared. So, I mean, we all, we're always working around park cars. We would still need the smaller equipment. But you're spot on with why, why they look that way. Trustee Lynn, did you have anything? No, no. Okay. So this is um, our first sort of four-way stop at um, all of just incidentally, so that's sort of um, adds to the convenience, I guess. So moving north, Olive to Marion. Marion will essentially match Olive in almost every way. Um, it's even more symmetrical because Marion, both east and west, the side streets have already bump outs. So that will essentially nicely complete the, uh, the intersection. Will it also have a four-way stop there? Or will there also be a four-way stop there? Or no. it's just going to look the same in terms of the bump outs? It's going to look okay. the same as the bump outs. There we, so we haven't, um, so there's only one location where we're recommending additional traffic controls. Okay. So this will sort of be exactly like today, except with bump outs. Um, and mid block, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Um, nothing exciting going on there. Um, north of Marion to Lake Bluff, 
So we have traffic signals at Lake Bluff, as you know, um, mid block, nothing exciting going on. It'll just be new pavement. And, um, and, and on the south side of Lake Bluff, we're proposing um, a pair of um, bump outs. Uh, north side, we have facing bus stops. Um, and um, this was sort of, we had originally, um, I had made a statement that said, well, we have um, signals, we don't need bump outs. And then somebody asked the question, so well, if you had signals and you were crossing the street and if you had bump outs, wouldn't it be safer? I said, hmm, yes, yes, it would. So that's what we did. And so we have an MCTS bus stop right right here in front yeah, of our show. Yeah, just Yeah. And and I don't see a bump out coming up from that corner. So I would assume that it's we're not putting a bump out there because of the bus stop, correct? Correct. So the this this phase, uh, the pair of bus stops are essentially taking up that space that you would need. So the thing is, even if so, you move them you're essentially taking away parking from us. Mm -hmm. um, so, but again, uh, I guess we, we, um, we are going to, so as I said, we, we will have a design level discussion with them sure. um, at, the, at, a, at, a, at the result of, as a result of this, this process. And uh, just to back up a step, we did have a tree pit in the middle of that block, right? Tree pit. Yes. Uh, in the past, in the slide right before this slide, there was another tree pit that we added. Did I not see that? That right. Oh, oh, oh. oh boy. Uh, no. There. There's one here. Okay. I thought I saw one on the previous slides. Here. There, okay. There's probably one there too. Nope. Yeah. There was. Between Mary. There. There you go. Yep. So those are, um, they look like they're randomly placed. They are. Well, so they follow two things. They follow removed ash trees, uh, which there are many more than, you know, this 10 that we're showing here. Mm -hmm. um, and they follow um, on street storm drains. So if there is a drain nearby, because tree pits are meant to collect surface water, but they are also released surface water because we don't want to drown the trees so they need to be near a thing that you can drain the water away slowly so that's why they appear at sort of seemingly mm -hmm. random places but that's only because ash trees are getting out of those plot sp uh, spots and those spots have happen to be near or adjacent to storm drains Thank you. Uh, yes, Nat. Yeah, that actually answered most of my questions. Um, <laughs> but could you, the tree pit then is a sunken bed? Is that what it, what's the physical difference? The, so the physical difference is that it's a, actually a container in which you plant the tree and then you put the whole thing underground. So to the observer above ground, it looks just like a tree on the street. Has a metal it's, grate and that kind of yeah, yeah exactly. Around. I mean, it looks nothing different than the trees that you see on Oakland or anywhere else on sort of, uh, well, not terraces, but Oakland, right? Um, but they are built. Um, the tree is placed in a container-like structure that um, allows water to percolate in it. Yeah, I think I understand what and that. Then, then, then there's a metal grate that uh, yeah. sizes around yeah. it. So all the action happens underground. Got it. I did notice just because we had an ash removed right out our front door, and we do have a drain pretty much next to it, but I don't see a tree pit on there. I'm not asking for one, but I'm just trying to make sense of. <laughs> yeah. Why the, so really the are. other thing that they follow is that we wanted to limit them to no more than ten because they are kind of spendy. Yeah. Um, and we didn't want to just below our, the budget on three pits because we were building all these other things. 
Cool. If they need one more, I'll, I'll take one. Yeah. <laughs> I think, you Honestly, know, we something we'll discuss. Range, I, but... I know there's a lot of people that hang out at the Draft and Vessel. It might be a good conversation topic and, you know, might go further <laughs> just by adding one more tree. But anyways, all right. Made a note of that. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, you see mid block here. This is a, a long block, right? The, the Lake Bluff to Kensington block are you know, essentially the big, big mm. block. But it, it already comes with its own existing um, bump out, which is great. So um, that's, um, and, and you, you know, in the olden days, I mean, that wasn't always there. Um, when we, it was put in there, it was just, I think the idea was to break out the monotony of the, of this long block, because, you know, you, you, um, you, you get a green on Lake Bluff and, you know, you're flying North. So now, um, we're not, obviously, I don't think we're even touching the existing bump out. We're just paving around it as you would, and, you know, moving on with life. Um, and, um. So then north of there. Sorry, one quick thing on that. That yes. one, that's that one is brick though, right? So would that be considered for updating with Ooh. when we do the other ABA? We will have to take a look at that. To take a look at it, okay. Yes. The the other th thing with that bump out is that the entire pavement in front of it is one piece with the curb that's like one giant concrete piece so if you wanted to replace the road and not touch the curb it's going to be very delicate so as leanne said we're going to have to look at that and kensington so we we did a lot of back and forth on this as uh, you know we currently have this the bus stops uh, located on uh, um, on Oakland at Kensington, um, we you know uh, we saw many sort of studies and previous discussions with regards to traffic signals. So we are currently proposing to do the strike uh, to do the signals and the bump outs because that's what we did already and so consistency one um what i would love to do here is to actually do a pair on either side so i'm showing here um sort of orphans that's a new thing i called yeah uh, but i would love to do signals and sort of pairs And um, so, and then we're going to Whitefish Bay. And uh, yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. My name is uh, Chuck Hagner. I live at 4459 North Ardmore. And I drive west on Kensington frequently uh, from Oakland Avenue. And uh, my concern is uh, the parking on each side of Kensington and what happens when you stop traffic light uh, because it's difficult frequently for two cars to pass side by side on Kensington when there are cars parked on either side, the north side and the south side of Kensington. Mm. Um, so you have to do a lot of um, hopefully courteous kind of like after you, yeah, you know, you have to move your car off to one side and then maybe mm. some cars will come through. And so my concern is that if you stop traffic with a light at Oakland Avenue, cars will stop and then be in a line. So you'll have stationary cars there. Uh, my fear here is that you will stop traffic on Oakland Avenue because there will be no place for cars to turn west on Kensington. Um, oh. And then um, this didn't occur to me until just now, but um, during the pandemic, I was uh, one of many people who would drive north on Oakland Avenue and drive crews right into the pickup lanes at Collectivo on the uh, corner of um, Kensington and Oakland. So um, I don't work at Collectivo. I don't really have anything to say for them. But um, this would affect and detract, that bump out would, would detract from ours abilities to just pull up into that pickup lane smack dab in front of that. We, um, that pickup lane is no more. 
So it's gone back to just parking at this point. No, just yeah, a FYI. I know, yep. I know, I know. That's they're not doing the outside pickup anymore. But I, I think I, I, you know, you can still cross okay. right through over there, you oh, know, yeah. and, and park. But um, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's a, Thank you for that. I, I, I would echo that concern with the light as well, because I also live um, just west on on Kensington, and it's that little stretch there from. Um, from Oakland up really almost all the way to Newhall, it's really busy, not only with the parking, but there's also a lot of cars that come out of the alley right there um, from those businesses because there's parking lots behind all that. Mm -hmm. So um, at the busiest times of day, you know, cars are lined up already at the stoplights. And basically, you kind of have to take your time, not only waiting for cars to pull out off of the street, but to come out of that alley you know, depending on how far back that line of cars go, they would be stuck back there. Thank you. Potentially. One more. So I think it was one of the concerns that people roll through the four-way stop there. Is there any traffic studies that show if you have a flashing red versus a stop sign, what's what's the safer? Like, what if you put the stoplight up, but you just had it flashing? Would I, you get? I think those signs are already more, flashed. Do they? Do they? I, right I'm now? pretty yeah. sure they do. So that we already. already have that. And that would be a very expensive flashing red light. Right. Right. You know. Just, but I'm saying the other thing is, it would it build you capacity if we get the density that some people in the village want? Would it give us? Would we be building for the future density? Mm hmm. This was a very difficult conversation in previous meetings, by the way. I mean, I think I've seen this topic go yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, several times. So I think it's for me, it's still very much up in the air. I, you know, it's a very expensive feature and I don't, I don't see it right now, but trustee Stokebrand makes a very good point. What does the future look like for, for the village and, and the density and, and does this help in 20 years? Cause this is our opportunity right now. So um, you know, we have these funds and we have the opportunity. Uh, does this make sense? Maybe it doesn't make sense right now, but does it make sense in 10 years or 20 years or whatever the case may be? So I think that's the conversation that we have to have. And I, and I think we probably will continue to have this conversation. Um, and, and these points are great points. And we want to hear all of your points about this particular feature. At least I do. Thank you. One one approach we might take is um, when we get to the point later in the evening of the committee making a recommendation to the full board or board's further consideration, um, staff and the, the engineering consultant can certainly uh, review this intersection, review with on Kensington and current parking configurations on Kensington to ensure that if if this moves forward, everyone is in full understanding of how traffic will queue at that light and impacts that may or may not have on other through traffic. So, I mean, we, we can absolutely review that and provide additional information for your next conversation, if you wish us to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, we, there's a, I won't tell you what the, there's a secret button here that'll help bring nice cool air to this room. And so hopefully we're, we're there. Okay, moving along. Yes, I, I right. This, this is very much in the air. I, I do agree. And I, I too sort of go back and forth every time I look at it. Um, and so, my intent is to help facilitate it, something that everybody feels comfortable with. Yeah, and I, I guess one last point here is, with those savings, is that something we look at redistributing um, throughout this process, or how do we realize those savings if we do not spend the money on that light? Is the funds just it just kind of we don't get to use that? Is it um, we can still use that, but 
you know, where do those funds go if we don't use them? You know, let's say we don't build the streetlight. Where where would those funds go? If more more tree pits. There's oh. got to be something else we can pave. Like but, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, um, so I think there could be a lot of opportunities there, and we've got a way. You know, and if if we have to use that money for this particular project correctly, and I mean that's not money that gets that can get. Correct. We have to use this that money on this particular project. Okay, thank you. Um, and hopefully, as we get into our northern village boundary at Glendale, um, we are sort of having a nice little entrance bump out um, pair coming on at the south side of Glendale Avenue. And that's um, no tree pits. Um, it's a straight shot from from there. Mustafa, I, I believe you know the village engineer in Glendale. I'm familiar with him, yes. Um, how how he's Whitefish Bay. He's or, in Whitefish Bay. Also Glendale. He's the village engineer in Whitefish Bay, so that's why I'm being sassy about that. <laughs> um, any comments and conversations about um, sort of doing half of that intersection? No, no concerns from Whitefish Bay on that end. Um, sure not. Okay. Are you going to be formally communicating with them, or should I communicate with them? I am uh, formally communicating with the um, director of public works um, okay. Wednesday. Okay. Wonderful. You may do so with the village manager. Okay, I wish. just didn't know if I had something that I could do. <laughs> then we'll we'll cover both bases. Okay. <laughs> so I assume this is wraps up um, this concludes. This is sort of what we had. Um, if um, I'll, I'll leave this up here for any sort of um, discussion, sort of visuals. Um, do we have a long? Do we have the? Is there a way you can get the whole? I know it's going to be very tiny, but if there's a way no, you can get the whole thing up there that would be fantastic i, I, I don't to... but it would be yeah okay it, it, there's uh, no real good way of other than like a long paper one yeah and on uh, screen it doesn't trusty so brown i know you had a question i was just thinking i could be wrong but in the in the time i've lived in shorewood i'm thinking of traffic fatalities and there was one at wasn't it at, it was at Ken no far that northern one Glendale, wasn't it? At Glendale and Oakland? I'm just trying to think of other traffic fatalities. Oh, yeah. And I guess maybe that's the one thing I would say. And I'm sure that the engineer has checked this traffic fatalities on Oakland Avenue. That's the only one I can remember. And, you know, there's no, there's just a stop, an east west stop at that, right? East west stops. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are there any questions here from the trustees? Uh, maybe bigger philosophical sort of thoughts, questions, comments? Um, unfortunately, this is not a big philosophical <laughs> thought, but- uh, Well, then we don't want it here. Okay. <laughs> that just made me think of if there's a traffic light on Oakland and Kensington, mm -hmm. that means that there isn't, a, uh, if that light's green, there's no, really no stopping from Hampton all the way to Lake Bluff. Um, so that's a pretty long stretch for somebody to build up speed as they come into a, a very busy area, just in general. Um, that's a great point. Well, right. If I you're mean, seeing that green light how they work. and you're just looking at the green light, yep. you're just cruising straight through. Whereas if there's the stop sign, it's forcing you to stop or at least nearly stop. I'm even more concerned about yellow lights, people trying to beat that and yellow blast light and through. blast through sure. and pick up speed and then keep going to like bluff. That, and that's, then there's my, that, that's a bigger concern. And there. then there's the unlit or unstop signed crosswalk halfway down the block, just on the street there that people already are yep. iffy on stopping on. Um, plus with all the apartments on there. Kids going to school. Kids going to crossing school, like, crossing yep. right there. It's a tough spot. It's a tough. Space. It's a tough spot. I, I mean, I think 
So, um, you know, when you read the, the, the safety and traffic analysis, it, it, it sounds like um, the, the authors of that study and, and the people overseeing the project, I guess, may have thought that it was a control structure, but you know, you can, you can play traffic signals, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Leanne and I had a thing at Capitol and Morris where, you know, you could beat the Oakland and Capitol light if you blow through Morris over to, I mean, we have video of it. So, you know, the lights are there, but people aren't stupid. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good point. Um, that's a and good point. that's the downside. Justy Baldoff, do you have any thoughts? Uh, no, I, just other than um, I would definitely be supportive of having, for one, moving this to the full board for consideration um, and appreciate um, you know, the conversation about this, but would like to see some alternatives uh, for what would happen at the intersection at Kensington when we bring it to the board, like Leanne mentioned. When you say alternatives, do you mean other elements we could use? Other, that? Right, other, um, you know, what are the other options? What are the other considerations maybe that weren't included in this presentation, but what are the pros and cons? I just want to make sure that the full board uh, kind of has has the information we got tonight about what the um, what the concerns are with any of the different options because like we heard um, there's no one perfect answer and I want to make sure we have a robust conversation. But I defer to the experts on what those are um, included. I don't want to make you guys you know include twenty things that definitely won't work, but. I just want to make sure the full board has all the information. Well, it wasn't so, you know, the the the, the how the, the process went and how the discussion went was that originally we started with the assumption that you know lights would go. What light would lights would be a go, right? Um, but then you know we counted cars turning and doing what they do. And it just weren't enough movement there. I know it looks busy, but if you actually sit there and count people doing things, you know, there weren't a lot of cars that you had to control, right? Um, so when we came here first, it was like, yeah, we, we shouldn't build this. Instead, you know, we'll do what we're doing everywhere else. Give it some space to pedestrians, build some bump, bump outs. I'll, I'll work with MCTS and get those um, bus stops out of there so that to simplify the situation, the, the simplify the geometry, simplify um, sort of the movements, right? So, so reduce the amount of things that are happening. So if, you know, you don't have a bus and you're trying to decide if you're going to turn right in front of a bus or not, or tuck behind it. I mean, all of that stuff, right? And then we had a conversation. I left here. I guess I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what happened. So I, um, and CJ wasn't here, but I went and I said, you know what? We're putting lights there. Right. And then you would appreciate this. And I said, well, you know, since we're putting lights, you know, we're not going to put bump up because lights, right? You know, it's green, you walk, it flashes, counts down maybe, whatever, right? And then she said, she, Leanne, said, well, tell me this. If you had bump outs and lights, isn't that safer, right? Well, I can't say no to that. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that, right? So that's, that's how I built this PowerPoint. Um, now, I have to say I'm flexible on it. I think um, what I would 
to just something you said um, previously. Don't, I mean, you know, this road we built in 08, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to make a 20 year decision. I mean, I'm not saying this thing is gonna have to have to be rebuilt in 18 years, but you know, it's not like a permanent thing, mm -hmm. right? I think that's too much pressure on kind of a decision. This is my opinion, right? Um, this is how I visualize and work with public works. Um, I would say that as a design professional who does this, who builds stuff in the North Shore, right? I'm comfortable with putting a set of traffic lights there and a bump out, thinking that yes, there will be a crazy dude who's going to do what you said, um, you know, but in general, it's going to calm things down. That's my opinion, right? So I, I would build it. So I'm not going to resist that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if this board votes and says, you know, save me 150 grand, and they're out. Is that the price? One hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh, no, more. Yeah, I thought it was closer to three hundred, but yeah, two hundred. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you need direction from us as far as that design element? Would that be helpful in this process? Uh, this committee telling you that we want to see the lights, we don't want to see the lights. Is is that that's helpful? So well, it's I it's such a like standalone package thing, mm -hmm. and it's probably ready, right? ish i mean it's a question of whether it's included or not it, yeah. it's literally you can decide in 24 yeah. like 24 oh got gotcha. you no, no we need no. for purposes we need for, to decide now <laughs> for purposes of this meeting no. i think it would be helpful to get a recommendation from this group but to trustee Bal baldoff's point come with that recommendation with the pros and cons from a design standpoint that come with either having a stoplight or not having a stoplight. Um, because there are some things, um, for example, that Chuck mentioned in terms of staging, queuing up for that intersection, just things that would be helpful, I think, for a board member to see, um, in addition to hearing what the, the recommendation will be from this group. And if I misinterpreted what I heard from no, that, please let me know. But that, that's also what I understood. And, and my, my approach at this point, unless you um, direct us differently, is that we would leave these drawings as they stand, but the memo and the, the additional background materials prepared for the meeting and presented to the village board mm -hmm. would include the, the items that you requested, Trustee Baldoff, um, a, a more in-depth evaluation, as I said, of queuing, parking, staging, et cetera. Um, and, and that would be presented as an additional packet material. So. Okay, that makes sense to me. And I mean, I think where I personally am on it is if this is what our staff is recommending and you guys are the ones who, you know, like Mustafa said, like count the cars and see who's coming through. Like, I trust that you guys are the experts, not me on that. Um, and if that's gonna be the safest, way to um enhance the street i think i'm going to personally be comfortable with that um i think it's just more of like from a technical standpoint do we need to make a motion that says that or is it just like we can just advance this as is as the motion is written here and then that material is with it so i'm just thinking of it more from a technical standpoint i think that's maybe a rebecca question yeah rebecca how would you like us to proceed would we make a motion and potentially add the lights as part of that motion you could do it either way um because i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to vote against this because part, like in, deep down yeah. in my soul i just uh, i don't i don't i don't believe in the in the stop in the traffic signal i just i just don't and uh you know i i can't you know i know we've had several conversations and i got there and then i i fell off the wagon and i just but i think you know i want to say overall this whole plan you know for for all of us it we've, yeah you're in i'm not in you know you're out i'm in 
but the, this whole plan has been, has been a focus, just a giant focus on uh, pedestrian safety. That, that has been our goal a hundred percent with this plan. Um, you know, we tried as much as we could to include a lot of, uh, green infrastructure. That was, an, that was another huge conversation. Um, you know, past conversations, it, it's not hundred percent feasible in a lot of this area. So I think the tree pits were our, our absolute best sort of, um, opportunity in this, but outside of, uh, green infrastructure, pedestrian safety was a hundred percent our focus here. And, and I think what you said about, does this make it a little safer for people? Um, that's what we have to weigh, you know, and I've heard, you know, we've heard some really good comments about maybe it's not safe, you know? So, so I would love to, I mean, I, mean, I don't know how to proceed with this. So my suggestion, cause I'm not hearing a lot of dissenting views on the remainder of the design. Is right. that accurate? Yep. hundred percent accurate. Is that, okay. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that you make a recommendation on the design and then should you desire to, um, because right now it says here. Um, well, it says recommended bump bounce and a new traffic signal. You could make the motion um, with the exception of discussing the lights at this intersection and approve the rest of the design and then come back on a, a second motion that related specifically to lights or no lights. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I do just need to clarify that when um, Trustee Morbaldoff referenced staff recommendation, I think as we've all agreed, there may not have been consensus yeah. on our staff. So for purposes of this evening, we're referencing the engineer's <laughs> recommendation. Noted. Um, or suggestion and how he's provided. Oh, I'm just being fair. And, and he's on the fence too, debate. I think. <laughs> um, and, and again, it's because we know logistically that this intersection doesn't merit a traffic light. You know, the, the volume and the movements like we've talked about don't merit this from an engineering perspective. So then it becomes a, a perception of what makes people feel safer or not. And how does that work? And, and so that's where we come to you as policymakers because there's value and judgment put into that decision, right? And, and I think, you know, Mustafa was very clear in saying, listen, I've had to really weigh this in my head. You know, we know from a traffic engineering standpoint what this means, but it doesn't mean that it can't be done, right? And that's what we've reiterated again to the community. You know, we're here to deploy and operationalize the policy that you make through these decisions. That being said, I mean, we'll, we'll try to help in the best that we can, but I just wanted to clarify that for the group. Uh, thank you. I think, okay. thank you for framing it like that. So which is a different way of saying like there are no wrong answers. I think that technically from an engineering standpoint, if, you know, I said it before, most people look at engineers like, do I need lights here? Because they don't want them. Um, mm -hmm. And so in this case, you don't have to have them. Now, anybody who wants one can get one, right? If the community feels safer, if the community as a non-professionals but real people have decided that this is a good thing and this will make my life a little less stressful right that so that's why i changed my mind mm -hmm. yep understood and that's i'm with you uh nat did you have anything that you wanted to to say sorry not super important but i was actually just going to take some pressure off because we have one at lake bluff you know and it's essentially the same thing and you guys were talking about flip-flopping, and I could literally say those two intersections could flip-flop, in my opinion. Yeah. Lake Bluff could not have a light, and Kensington could have a light, and it would make just as much sense, considering it's the same amount of cars, and they're similar intersections. And I, you know, I'm at both pretty much every morning. I go to Colectivo. I'm at a business at both. I have kids at both. And if you're looking for, like, but. A comparable example like what would this be like obviously it would be exactly like lake bluff mm -hmm. and i will say that intersection may not merit a light but thinking about it now it's like perfectly fine no downside i've never seen anything anybody rush through it i drive through it multiple times a day and i would say it probably feels a little like you said if you want to remove stress from your life it feels a little more controlled mm. and not a hassle and can't imagine Kensington would be any different. Have to be the exact same. Buy it. So thank you. No, I, I, I'm I, in I, saying probably doesn't need one, but I'm thinking about it like, it, why not? Yeah, and that, and I think that's where we ultimately landed in our conversation is 
why not? But you know, I appreciate your opinion. You're a business owner. You live in the you live in the community of a business right there. I want so to your perspective. Every day and it is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you think having two lights though would be, you know, beneficial to the community in that block? Yeah, I mean, so moderately that I don't anybody would notice, but I have to press myself they pull up intersection feels more predictable mm -hmm. walking and driving not at all like oh such a hassle never crosses my mind that yeah i appreciate that thank you um i appreciate that very much it's a good way to think about it too um just my my last thought on it is that with a light the the benefit of a light you know, in addition to to traffic calming and not having to think about it, is that it allows a stream of traffic, pedestrian, cars, otherwise, in one direction at a time at a designated time. So it lets the traffic build up, then go all go through at the same time. Um, at Lake Bluff, that's nice for the kids going to school. They all get to the corner, they group up, they cross at once. Um, at this intersection, when you mentioned the volume, you know, I spent a ton of time at this intersection. It's right outside of my house. Um, and at that intersection, there's, there's never a long line of cars waiting, but there's always two cars at least, you know, two to four cars in any given direction. Um, so I like, who would we be opening it up to? You know, we'd be stopping the one car well, no other cars go this, you know, stopping two cars going this way. Well, no cars are going this way at a red light. Then it turns green. Then those two cars get to go, you know. Well, I, that, that's, I was going to lead into a question that I had for Leanne is uh, what's the technology for traffic signals today? Is it camera based? Is it weighted based? Or how do you regulate the signals? Um, is that police? Uh, <laughs> no, currently, I... Hmm. I can't necessarily speak to Oakland Avenue, but I, I do know that um, Capitol Drive, the signals from the hours, I believe, of 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. are on a schedule. Hmm. Um, they don't respond to vehicle or pedestrian calls. They're, they're automatic, they're timed, they're consistent, they do not change. Um, in many communities, and, and I should back up and say, that was based on a request from the then Pedestrian Safety Committee, because they believed that um, it was important to give equal weight to vehicles and pedestrians, and pedestrians shouldn't have to press a walk signal to, you know, press a button to get a walk signal. That should come up automatically. It should be weighted equally. Um, we had some conflicting conversations from with the Conservation Committee because, um, you know, there's a, there's an equal and similarly valid argument that, um, you know, if car, cars should not have to stop at an intersection mm -hmm. for a signal when there are no cars coming from a different direction and there are no pedestrians, and that that's you know that's a, that's a fuel suck. Mm -hmm. That yeah. So balancing interests, right? That's what we do. Um, so that is how. Um, I believe all of the signals in the village um, that we have um, control over um, are timed, so that they're they're completely actuated. Is that correct? Um, from the 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. hours. Outside of those hours, then there um, you you do need to make a pedestrian call, um, and there there is a recognition of you. A green will stay continuous on Capitol until there's a call mm, from a, a side street. Okay, interesting. That's good to know. Um, I, I, I've said it before on the committee, and I'm sure I'll say it again in the future. I'm generally pro stop sign. Um, and that's where I'm leaning towards now. But as we mentioned before, I'm okay with everything else on this design. I think these is really well done. It's really well thought out. Um, I like the bump outs. I like the tree pits and all this. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy pushing all of this forward and then to allow for separate further consideration of, of the traffic signals versus stop signs at uh, Oakland and Kensington. So, yeah, I think that's great. Good uh, by me. Would, would you like to make that a motion? Um, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <Matt. laughs> um, so before I, before I say it, um, where is it here? 
do we have oh possible I'm going to... okay so could i say this um motion as it's kind of potentially written here and then say with the exclusion of the traffic lights specifically at oakland and kensington okay um noting that that's for further consideration in general so uh, I move to recommend the roadway design of North Oakland to the village board with the exception of the traffic lights on Kensington and Oakland. I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And there you have it. I have, I have just a general comment, not specific to this. Okay. Okay. Um, it, we had some conversation earlier about the impact of bump outs on winter operations. And I, I, that's a great conversation to have an expectation to set. And I, I do want to plant another seed in that with the addition of the, the number of bump outs that's being proposed for this design, um, th these will have some pretty significant impacts on regular maintenance operations, as in, there is no ability to close a traffic lane and reroute that traffic into the parking lane. Every time we have a maintenance operation, there will be a detour mm -hmm. because we've, we, we lose that ability to have flexibility and use of the parking lane for travel. So I, that's not said as a dissuasion from what you've done. I. I Again, we're, we're going into the expectation setting. So that is going to have to be something that we need to do a very good job of communicating and making people understand because it has big impacts. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, uh, are there any further comments by the public or trustees? If not, then I would take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Ayes have it. We are adjourned at uh, 723 PM. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for allowing me to sit at your spot. I can